and welcome to the very first film essays video. I have recently watched Lucille Hadzahalilovic's 2015 film Evolution. If you are not familiar with Lucille Hadzahalilovic, she is a French film director, who as of now, has only made two feature films. The first being Innocence, released in 2004, and Evolution, released 11 years later in 2015. It's probably also worth mentioning that she is the wife of controversial director Gaspar Noé, whose films include Irreversible, Enter the Void, and Love. To talk about evolution, we simply cannot exclude Hadzahalilovic's earlier feature, Innocence. Once you have seen both films, it's clear in many aspects they go hand in hand. The visual style, themes, symbolism, and even storylines play off like two pieces of the same puzzle. Since its release in 2004, Innocence has garnered a modest cult following, and is generally regarded as a surrealist work, that uses a bizarre narrative storyline, as a metaphor for its true messages. When I first saw this film, I was actually taken back by how dark and gripping it was. Watching this film is genuinely like entering another world, that's both foreboding, confusing, beautiful and dark. The cinematography and impeccable sound design had a hypnotizing effect on me. My curiosity to see this mystery revealed kept me captivated until the very last sequence. But the film's mystery is never revealed. There is no clear-cut answers at the end. Innocence does not have a conventional story arc, so many people coming away from seeing the film have wildly different experiences and interpretations as to what it's all about. Innocence begins with the viewer being underwater, until a lush wooded landscape is revealed. We see the dark interior of a modern building. We then see a coffin placed in a room. Inside this coffin is the film's initial protagonist, Iris, a young child. When she wakes up from inside the coffin she is greeted by several other children, exclusively female, who introduce themselves. Comment tu t'appelles? Iris. Bonjour Iris. Voici Nadia. Rose. Vera. Alice. Et Selma. Et moi je suis Bianca. Iris does not know how or why she is there, and expresses a desire to go home to her family. The possibility of this is dismissed by the other girls. C'est ici ta maison maintenant. Et on va me chercher. Mais non. Et si mon petit frère va me chercher. Mais non. The more we watch these young girls, it is clear, the dynamics of the house is not that of a typical boarding school environment. Apart from education there is no supervision. It also seems they have authority over the elderly workers who prepare their meals. This is hinted at by the harsh comments one of the girls make during Iris's first meal there. C'est Madeleine. Elle est là pour nous servir. Si elle désobéissait, elle serait punie. Another important concept in the film is that each girl wears ribbons in their hair which symbolizes a kind of hierarchy of the girls. During the film Iris befriends one of the older girls, named Bianca. Each night Bianca leaves Iris's building and seems to be hiding a secret, as she doesn't seem to want to discuss this when asked. We do see a little bit of what goes on here early in the film when she is followed.
Apart from regular classes, the girls are mainly taught ballet. Succeeding in ballet seems to be some sort of escape for the girls, as one of them gets handpicked by a woman who visits the school. Oh, c'est quoi ce petit ballon Rentre le petit ballon. <laughs> While many other things happen in the film, one of the most important sequences is when the ballet class is led to a hidden stage where they are not told what will be happening, but eventually end up performing for an obscured audience. This is probably the most eerie and unsettling scene in the film. So what is it all about? My interpretation is that Hadza Halilovic is trying to show us the frightening reality that children face when going through puberty. Children are unaware of what's happening and have to deal with what seems like absurd and bizarre concepts. The ribbons on the girls symbolize sexual maturity. This is made clear when Bianca opens a drawing of a semi-naked male and it is implied she tries masturbating. Shortly after this, and the ballet performance, Bianca, along with several other girls, is brought out into the real world, which looks much like our own. Here she begins to have her first interaction with a boy, complete with phallic and orgasm symbolism. The film is a metaphor for how we shield children in our society from the realities of puberty and sex which in turn makes puberty a confusing and dark period in our lives. We cannot seek comfort in our parents, and it even hints that young girls are being sexualized when they are too young to understand it. Sex is seen as a forbidden world for adults only. This film creates this surreal concept to make us understand how young children usually feel when entering puberty. If Innocence is a work that deals with the discovery of puberty and sexuality, then Evolution is a work that deals with the understanding of Darwinian evolution and human reproduction. In order to do this Hadza Halilovic presents a world where our reproductive method has evolved in a slightly more bizarre way. Just like in Innocence, Evolution is set in a surreal world where children are only among children of the same gender. This time it is males. The coast they inhabit seems to only have male children and female adults. These adults have a firm hand in supervising the children. The film follows Nicholas and his mother. Nicholas is on some sort of diluteable medication and is told he has an illness. Pourquoi je suis malade Parce que tu arrives à un âge où ton corps se transforme et s'affaiblit. Similar to Innocence, his mother hides a secret, along with the other parents, in which they leave to attend to at night. Nicholas eventually discovers what they do and toward the end of the film is hospital in order order to reproduce. The parental figures in evolution are integral to the storyline as a metaphor, because discovering how reproduction works, starts with understanding the reality of how our parents made us. In the film, when Nicholas discovers his mother's sexuality, he is horrified, which is relatable to us. Hadza Halilovic has switched what we know as sex and pregnancy, to a bizarre concept involving operations and back sex organs. 
to make us rediscover how bizarre we thought sex was when we first found out about it. In a way she is making us rethink our familiarity of it, and rediscover how bizarre it actually is. These two films are utilizing the same concept, that is one in which we change the realities of our world with an alternative world, and through this we can rediscover how strange our reality actually is.